you can't deny that Far Cry 4 was arguably the best Far Cry 4 of all time. There are a ton of ways to approach any given problem in the game, but the last 25 years of my life have been kinda stressful. I want to go back to a simpler time, when people actually got their hands dirty. Can you beat Far Cry 4 with only a machete? Before we get to the real game, for the first time in Mitten Squad history, I can say that this video is sponsored by Ubisoft. You've seen me play Elmo's Number Apocalypse. You know I love numbers, and Ubisoft loves them too. That's why they're donating $25,000 to Able Gamers, a charity that's helped thousands of disabled people around the world experience the kind of stories you can only get through video games. In addition to the massive donation, Ubisoft borrowed the machete they let me borrow from them to slash the prices of Far Cry 3, 4, and 5 to an incredibly satisfying 3, 6, and 9 dollars per game. And with Far Cry 6 due to be born on October 7th, you've got the entire summer to experience some of the most chaotic fun the world of video games has to offer. Use your favorite finger to click on the link at the top of the video description to check out the games, and for more information on where Ubisoft is taking Far Cry next, Make sure to tune in to Ubisoft Forward on Saturday, June 12th at 12 p.m. Pacific Time. That's 3 p.m. EST if you're in the BEST time zone. Our story begins, as so many stories do, on the bus with an old man, a passport, and a monkey. You can think of Pagan Min as the moose in charge of our little mountain adventure. My escort and I signed up for two very different experiences. I wanted the torture, but he took it for himself and left me sweaterless with the disgusting ocean food. You don't eat what comes from the ocean, that's where the plastic lives. I left what's his name behind, Sable rescued me, I took my time walking to the car, didn't get to play with the elephant, and I practiced not shooting anyone with a gun by not shooting anyone with a gun. A tree had a wild night, and before I could spell machete, I found myself ankle deep in the raging war for the nation of Karat. I never put away the rifle or the bow or whatever primary weapon I had. You can't. Or maybe you can, I never really bothered to try. And because we've all seen the movies where the character has a gun and can easily kill someone, but they choose to use a slower and more direct option. As the protagonist, the good guy, it's my duty to do just that. To let everyone know I could put a bullet through their nostril from an inch away, but I won't. The beginning is probably the hardest part of the early game. Gun bashes are less effective than they are in real life, but still better than most. Most games. You get bopped on the nose with an AK-47's ass, you're gonna take a fall. It wasn't long before I grabbed my rope, planted my feet vertically on a rock, and refused to turn back. Almost literally, I climb the same way I live my life, with no way down. Before scaling the tower, I made the game my glove by configuring the controls to better suit the collapsed man. The good news for this slice of machete cake is that the range on the takedown window is quite large, and the sight of a wild mitten squad sprinting towards someone is enough to freeze anyone in place, allowing me to end them. After the avalanche, the prologue was over. We're going to war. Sabal is more of a traditionalist, while Amada has goals for the people of Karat that include using multiple max revives on the local economy all at once just to see what happens, and becoming mules for a drug overlord whose name might not rhyme with anything at all. To prepare my body for the upcoming donkey muscles, I did as the good man said and ran through the jungle only to come inches away from my own demise, set free a few wires from their cages, and faced my biggest challenge yet, the wild mountain rhino. Seeing two tons of love barreling towards me after it tossed a car out of the way like it was nothing was a borderline traumatizing experience. Naturally, I attacked the next one I saw, performed a maneuver involving a soon-to-be dead body that amazed everyone in the room, and I met the preacher. He's got a scorpion in one hand, a gun in the other, and a fire in his heart. As a man of God, he knew that Banapur was in trouble because I just told him it was. With no time to spare, I sped towards the town on my all-terrain Venomoth and saved the town with my secret life-saving superpower of crime. Without guns, you've really only got two ways to attack. A brute force option doesn't really work in this game. Enemies are too smart for that, even on the easiest difficulty. You try to stick a knife in someone's cavity and they ain't gonna like it. I either sat in the shadows and lured people to me with rocks or ran out from behind cover, scored a takedown on someone, then hit the shadows again before anyone knew I was there. You can f around with the rascals you find wandering the road looking for meaning to life besides the violence, but if you're doing a mission or you're posting around somewhere like a fence or there are more than three or four guys attacking, it's gonna require some effort. As for me, I'm all about the effort. Enough to be able to sit back later with regret, but not enough to complete the task at hand. 
The hostages went and got themselves into a hostage situation, requiring me to save them. Luckily, the game understands my handicaps. There are too many hostages to count, but I only had to save two. Unless I say otherwise, you can safely assume that a roadside coincidence that lets me look like a savior was not much trouble. Trouble in the sense that you save a hostage, then almost get mauled to death by a pack of forest rabbits. Then, after everything I did for these people, they hit me with a car. Soon enough, the elephant inside me will be unleashed on this nation for that little stunt gone wrong. What I'm doing now is what a golden retriever might refer to as a search and rescue mission. Food and supplies are hanging out with the moonshiners, and it's up to me to save them from themselves. This isn't an intervention though. I was always more of a WA2000 kind of guy. This is a redistribution of wealth. I took the food, ate it myself, tossed the crumbs into the wind, and got to work clearing out my first really dealy outpost. It would have gone better if I hadn't tried to work on some stretches on this right here pole. With the help of another wilderness elephant, we turned this outpost on its head. The elephant f those people up bad. Amita put words of praise on my forehead after I cleared out the outpost. She explained how my parents were warriors, who started the golden path to free Karat from Pagan and Maine, and I examined my skills. There are two trees, tiger and elephant. The tiger tree is all about sneaking, stealth takedowns, subterfuge, and overclocking real life to win, while the elephant, he's just there for the adventure. His skills increase health, potency of syringes, there's a lot of good stuff I can't play with today. There's a lot of time between now and October 7th when Far Cry 6 releases and anything could happen. I've heard Far Cry 5's got an alien DLC with a leaf blower you can use as a weapon. I might have to skip this summer's trip to Bible Camp to go into space. I don't exactly remember where I was going next. I was a little more preoccupied with ending a certain bear that got too big for his britches. That was a little bear joke. I wasn't talking about some other guy. Nobody in the forest was safe. Not the bears, not the cougars, not Bambi's parents. Not even the vegetation rooted into the planet could stop me unless it stopped me. To reach my objective in a timely manner, I borrowed a helicopter and took to the skies where I saw something that shouldn't have been there. A bird of some sort. But how can a big bird be in the sky when birds don't reel? I don't know if you've ever tried to hit a seagull with anything. It's not easy. One of two things were gonna happen. Either I was gonna shred the beast with my wings, or I'd die trying. I died trying. God punished the earth for not laughing at his jokes with the flood. I punished Karat's endangered species list for adding me to it by using every tactic I could imagine to stop this truck. I threw a box at it. It did nothing. I moved on with my life. Back on the golden path, I approached Camp Alpha and was formally introduced to hunters. They like to bounce, be quiet, use long range weapons, and patrol the streets with their animals. While they were busy running with the tigers, I was swimming with the allegories, told Amada that everyone at Camp Bravo was dead, and she was sad, which confused me because I was sent there to liberate their souls. Before continuing the main story, I had some things to handle. I started by sharpening my knife on a hippo. That was it. Remember those supplies from earlier? A watering hose bit me after I delivered more. A few hundred meters outside of somewhere, I ran into Herc the bloodthirsty little man with a heart that bleeds red, white, blue, and most importantly, green. We won't see him again. What I saw a lot of though were tree branches and the inside of my own skull. I appreciate the fact that ramming my face into a slice of epidermis has realistic consequences. That said, there were several times I would have been satisfied getting a pine cone stuck in my throat. That would have been less upsetting than what my mind did to itself. Here's the twist. I've been trying to blow up these bells the entire time. They spin. Shit. That explains everything. Found an elephant somewhere, named him Jeff, and together we roamed the countryside. I saw him as an extension of myself. As with all extensions, both on the job and in cordage, it was not meant to last. I used Jeff to ram a truck off the road, set him loose on the town, and legitimately felt strange as I hopped out of the truck. I looked back at him one final time, then drove away. It was almost like an emotion. I hope I never go through something like that again. Sabal had me perform a ritual to get in touch with my inner self at the church. I think it was a trick. While I was playing with the sparklers in the living room, I got word that soldiers were on their way. Instinctively, acting on nothing but impulses, I got in the jeep and used it to block the path. It took me a minute, but I got it right where I wanted it, and the onslaught began. When you're restricted to only a machete like a certain someone, some of the most difficult portions of the entire Far Cry 4 are gonna be dealing with the missions where sacred stones need to be babysat, as if they're going anywhere. Groups of enemies come in from all different directions, and with no way to attack from a distance, I had to be ahead of the game. This was the moment everything changed. I cheated. The rule is I can only use the machete. 
which is a knife. Throwable knives exist as a skill and as an item. If I hadn't taken it yet, I eventually stole the perk that learned me how to throw things. With that skill, the knife you use is ripped off the person you take down. I let myself use as many throwing knives as I wanted, but only one. I had to use it, then go pick it up and get it back. But even then, it's something I only used in situations like this. Big ass confrontations. With the monastery safe, I spoke to Linus again, he's the preacher, who sent me deep into the mountains to steal a package of guns from the army. A couple four-legged bastards tried to repel the bipedal creature that got off the metal monster, scattered like fleas when I got one of them, marked all the care packages for transport, and got myself into a pickle. Stuck hopelessly atop a rock, with nowhere to go, and the eagles unwilling to read my restraining order, I took to the lowest possible sky to escape the scenario I caused myself, used the same tactic to dodge some dogs, returned the power crystals to Lanius, and went on my merry way. Just when I thought I had some time to myself, Sable and Amy were bickering about what to do about the drug fields. Amada's eyes are filled with green, while Sabal's, I don't know, I didn't see what he had to say. Upon completion of my ocular pat-down, I began my assault on the tea factory. They found me almost immediately, meaning I went undetected for far longer than I'd planned. Payne and Gaines men have decided to end our little festival of friendship before it got off the ground. It was supposed to be in space, but they burned the damn fields. However, Ubisoft were smart when they designed this game. They knew those fire guys might show up, so they installed sprinklers. I died to this segment many times. The hold off against the kidnapping of the land took about 15 minutes. The objective in combat is always to get behind someone. The knife doesn't care if the victim knows it's going spelunking in their chest cavity. Takedowns can be done from starboard, but the victim usually needs to be distracted or surprised. Preacher Man has another job, and this one is a real dinkster of a mission. The smugglers have some toys that would be perfect for the kids' music room. I had a truck to follow them with, someone got turned around, and I ended up trying to follow them in reverse. Then I backed into a tree and lost the truck. I tried to wingle the next time. The JBL of trees hit me with a clothesline from heck. On attempt three, I thought my knowledge of shapes and lines could save me. I gave up on the swingsuit after the fourth try, followed the incognito mosquito back to his hive, and successfully performed a far cry for the first time. I sprinted past the bad guys, threw a rock at some dipshit noggin, flew into the lake, hopped on a wave racer, and delivered the goods. There are buckets in this game too. I, like your average mother duck, escorted them to their designated living spaces any time I found one that escaped, and had to protect an army truck with a knife. Not f***ing easy. It can only be fixed when stationary, and nobody is there to help you. You're on your own against trucks full of the Red Menace. If you can get to the trucks before anyone gets out, the odds of survival drastic go up. You can get a takedown on one as they get out of the truck, then use it as cover. I witnessed the unparalleled beauty of nature as I traveled towards my next objective. Few things are as graceful as doing a double barrel roll in a pickup truck that got flipped by a raging otter. A young lady watching corpses melt erased an interesting point by mentioning how my father was murdered. I thought about that as I sat there in my truck that I'd gotten stuck between a cliffside and a tree. Back at HQ, Yogi and Reginald stuck me in the neck with Mr. Pointy and I found myself at the arena run by Nora. Current objective, survive. That was the objective of everyone else. Animal or man, I'd been training my entire Far Cry 4 life for this moment. Hadn't considered the heavies. They're the elephant of the human world. Killing a heavy with a machete on any difficulty is a challenge worth celebrating. Get close and they pistol whip you with an M2 machine gun. Or you stay in their line of sight and you're pelted with pencils. The good news is that you get the perk to perform takedowns on heavies after you eliminate this first one. Having proved myself in the eyes of my mirror, Nora and I hatched a plan to do the impossible. Operation Kill Paul is officially underway. To draw him out, he had to be provocated. Nothing crazy, we're just gonna casually steal a temple. This was the hardest part of the entire game, without a doubt. There are seven, eight soldiers waiting down there at the base of the temple, a sniper up at the top. You only have five minutes to reach the detonator after you've been detected, and then you have to hold off against multiple waves of reinforcements by yourself. If I had a dollar for every mean thing I said in the 45 minutes it spent me to progress through this, I could retire. The only strategery that didn't end with my entire body seizing on the ground was sitting on the statue to force most of the soldiers to come up the ladder one at a time. I'd say I officially failed the challenge here when I had to take out the helicopter. Now you would think that using a high-powered rifle would allow me a moment to relax, but I haven't fully explained what I did to the controls yet. You might have noticed the keys. Melee is left-click. 
crouch is right click, fire the gun button is U, hold breath is shift, and aim down sights is Y. Using that combination of keys almost all at once was one of the most complicated things I've ever done in a game. All that remained was to show the mountain what happens when you don't do what you're told. I presented an offering to an old man in the forest, called on the cousin of an old friend to help me out with one final mission. He did his job admirably, but sadly, I pushed him too hard. I'm sorry he wasn't the elephant I thought he was. Jeff's knees could have handled that. The next elephant I outsourced played a pivotal role in the battle for Karat. He was the distraction that allowed me to infiltrate Paul's compound. I tried a number of different techniques that involved taking down a large number of his men. Survival wasn't the issue. It was a party, and even I wouldn't be so low as to murder someone at a party. I'd do it before the party, then, at the party, loudly ask where my victim was in the middle of the party. To get to Paul, I did a series of improbably events. I took out one guy, climbed up to the rooftops, threw a trunk of someone else's flesh down to attract animals, which went sideways faster than I would have thought. Not long later, I was right where I wanted to be, tied to a chair by Paul with a bag over my head. My plan worked. I bonked him, somehow managed to carry him out of the party on my first try, handed him over to the Golden Path for a fun evening, and I'm off to secure a brick factory. As soon as I set foot in that factory's land space, I knew everyone else's luck had run out, at least back from the dead to help me in my hour of need. She and her brother watched the topside while I searched for the chemist in the disco catacombs. Despite knowing that there would be some funky stuff at some point, it still caught me off guard. It was a beautiful bloody rainbow of carnage down there that didn't stink because I never used the flamethrower. Ellie accompanied me for a while, but a concert is no place for an elephant. Tigers, bears, rhinos, puppies, yes, just not elephants. The goal here is to incapacitate Noor. She's a pagan groupie who's outlived her usefulness to the cause. She's dead for sure, and she most likely did it to herself. I just can't help but think that she'd have been conscious after that fall as she got torn to shreds. We're getting under Pagan's fingernails now. His armored wrath is in play. Without guns and explosives, Jeffy number 5 had to make an appearance. Three trucks, three mounted guns, eight to ten men in total, a complete and total sh show all around, mostly because I'm doing something wrong with the elephants. To reward them all for their very noble sacrifices that I forced them to make, I let this one elephant ask me for anything in the world. I gave him a shot, and he f***ing nailed it. This kid's going places, like down a cliff. I wish I could say it gets easier when they pass on, but it never does. To better understand my folks, I mind melded with the fireplace in the basement, did a 360 no scope dive into the ice, and experienced the glory of Caligno, the legendary warrior who journeyed to Shangri-La to stop the voodoo monsters from taking over. With the Galle homestead having successfully foreclosed in favor of the defendant, I dropped 300 grand on a helicopter pad, opened the world up to everything my mind had to offer, and faced my biggest hurdle yet. Far Cry's favorite patriot needs help at the airport. I usually wouldn't help someone in need, but he's got info on mother and father's untimely disappearances. As I've said, snipers are the most annoying of foes besides heavies, and there are six of them that need to be killed, and you can't be detected or you fail. I gave myself one extreme bow shot to take one out, failed at that, got detected, held a grenade to end my life. That didn't work either. Spent 20 minutes killing all the snipers as slowly and methodically as I could think to, and actually succeeded. I got detected and failed, but got credit for the eliminations, reached the tower, and performed a series of spins as Willis prepared to meet his target. Here's the plan. He says the secret slime word, and I blow the commander's head off with a sniper. You see the problem. In my drinking days, I might have been like, the game forces you to use the sniper to save Willis. That. This is Far Cry. There's always another option. I flying squirreled myself off the tower down to Willis, who thank God ran into the hangar to not get in my way. The only thing I couldn't do was defeat the helicopter. I have a gut feeling that a throwing knife could kill the helicopter gunner, and maybe the pilot too, but I knew that wasn't something I'd ever be able to pull off. Willie boys got the deets on my dead parents. Pagan's new second in command, after the former me, is Yuma last name. She wouldn't return my calls, so I did a speed run of a mountain climbing adventure to begin the process of tracking down one of her subordinates. They're the key to tracking down Yuma. Don't worry about the RPG, it's not for you. In the second area, I was in over my head. I didn't think that was possible given the size of my dome. There's this little ledge on the stairs that you can stand on and thanks to the position, most animals and humanoids won't be able to attack, so you can bully a bear by throwing rocks at it. Willie radioed in to say he'd be late. I used the dream team of the parachute and wingsuit to ollie over this gap to unlock Shrek as a playable character. 
attempted it in the next area, used all the liquid inside my body as paint on the mountain, took out Yuma's lieutenant, scraped my pelvis on a rock as I glided into town, and immediately returned to the mountains to take out another L for more intel. In what should have been the easiest portion of this entire game, I almost ate twice. Willie gave me the boot of betrayal, and after everything I've done, a single man knocked me to sleep. Yuma blasted salt in my eyes, Things happened that I won't show or describe because this is a family-friendly channel. Awake from my dream, I fell off a cliff. My ankle caught a rock and slingshotted my head into the prenatal pavement. Using conveniently placed pieces of a grappling hook, I began my escape from the prison with death after death after death. I experienced the shocking power of gravity moments ago and wanted to harness it for my own personal goal, which consisted exclusively of grappling the hook at such an extreme speed that I fly into orbit. Whether it can or can't be done, it's not my place to make that call. Sometime later, I found myself at the happiest place on earth and lacking the time for time wasting, parkour to safety, slowly became a snowman, woke up, and went to capture a chemical truck for the golden path. You're supposed to use C4 to blow open the convoy execute the driver, and take the truck. I couldn't do that. I had to play it smart. Two trucks belonging to the enemy blocked the path of the chemical tanker. I used my one throwing knife to take out the driver from the safety of a bush, barely survived long enough to give the new driver a death by 10 million paper cuts, blew open the gates to hell, then flew back down to the entrance to demonstrate, like an anime villain, how serious I am. That was around the time they killed me. Gravity made sure to get me back for that shit I talked a while back when I was freeing another tower from solitude. To truly stop Pagan, we need a completely united Karat, and that includes the Northerners. They were ready to wage the kind of war you only hear about all the time. Good news for them, Uncle Payne's there to offer his protection. They're safe now, but the chase is on. I ran for my mechanical bird, headed for the waypoint, which was another bird, made the switcheroo, rammed him off the road, and ended his reign of terror for a couple seconds. So, you know what that means. Yuma dies today. Like most hideous fungal infections, Yuma is hiding out in an abandoned cave. She relies on trickery and delusions of red-flavored Kool-Aid to defeat her opponents. The trip she sent me on had me believing Amata was conspiring with the Overseer to stage a coup. You might be surprised to know that these Donkey Kong sections were, and let's keep this among us, some of the most fun non-combat parts of the game. Just not quite as fun as playing what killed my elephant. I got things mixed up. I'm not playing the game. I am the game, and it was rigged from the start. To kill the kaleidoscope, I had to go against my own strict set of morals and use the bow. You can't machete Kalignag, he smoke grenades himself if you get too close. Multiple waves of Kalignags are sent to kill you since this is a dream sequence. All those explosive baskets that I blew up earlier for no reason were most likely intended for this boss fight. Looking back, had I not wasted those baskets, I probably could have knocked them over to win this without the bow. Regardless, Yuma's spirit has been shattered. This is my moment to strike. But what should my target be? Unsure. I put my educated flaps to good use by flying to Bird River Hamlet. Something about that name just gave me the willies, which then made me less comfortable than I already wasn't. This kid, who's supposed to be the reincarnation of Andrew Ryan or something, told me that Amita wants to attack the Tower of Juju while Sabal wants to preserve it. I descended on that sacred ground like hellfire performed the single sickest takedown in the history of underground takedowns, and attempted to rig the Jenga tower to come tumbling down. Thankfully, I didn't have to kill everyone to succeed. I only had to plant the explosives. I killed almost everyone there because I could. I don't think the explosion hurt anyone. We got tailed, my driver ate shit, and I collapsed on the water. I wasn't taking any chances the second go around. I killed Mary, sat motionless in the boat while the drivers drove by to avoid being detected, and completed the mission. With Amida now in charge of the Golden Corral, I took the necessary steps to prepare for the end of the line. On my way towards that line, I saw a rhino try to help this guy who got stuck in a three-sided hole. Apparently, this kerfuffle between Amida and Sabal has turned into an almost war. She doesn't trust Sabal anymore, and I never did to begin with. He's a problem for another time. The big bads got artillery aimed at our stronghold in the Valley of Death. I almost got there safe and sound. I wasn't hurt. I mean, I was when I tripped and fell 25 feet down this hole, but worse than the back pain was watching my bird fly away for no reason. Ustengrav was filled with royal guard. Watching it back to write this script, shutting down the artillery and saving the town might have been the deadliest mission in this entire game. I haven't done it yet, so I don't know what the count is, but there will be a kill counter for this town. It's gotta be at least 25 new recruits for Grandma Sparkle's army. Compared to what came next, that would have to be nerf, because it wasn't nothing. 
Knowing the series of missions that came next would conclude this adventure, I put it off for a moment to clean up a few loose ends. For example, I still hadn't knocked my helicopter off a bell tower, then tripped over my bird and fallen off the tower to my death. Only four towers were left to clear. Why not cleanse the entire nation all at once? The penultimate penultimate tower gave me the hardest time. Someone was doing laps around the building, and they weren't hurting nobody, so I had no reason to hurt them either. I only tried to skydive through the chopper and accidentally hit the blades that one time. I thought for the first time since I began climbing these things, to test the structural integrity of it. Seemed pretty solid. Sabal is all that remains in our way now. I was ordered to kill him by Amida, but I couldn't do it. A gun isn't a knife, and my fingers have betrayed people before. I wasn't taking any chances. I let him go, met up with the golden path, and we began the violence. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. The initial taking of the front gate went fairly well. Being careful about blowing open the front gate without it hurting anyone but the gate was the biggest obstacle my weak knees faced. Holding the fortress is where the real game began. You might have noticed where I went wrong in this skirmish. I went in with nothing. No flowers for Paul, no bait, no armor, no singular throwing knife. Failure after failure after failure after failure forced me to regroup and reassess the situation from a fresh perspective. I required all the assistance from inanimate objects I could possibly muster to take down Pagan. I began by buying a 1911. I can't use it, but it looks cool. Next, I wanted to upgrade my bait bag throwable bag and pick a bunch of flowers to kick my body into overdrive. In trying to do that, I ran into a friendly face, got an alert that Paul's fortress was weakened, let my boy loose, and died immediately. That was like the 12th elephant I've lost to the void today. Four kilometers away from my goal, practically on the other side of the f***ing planet, I found lucky number 13 and almost lost him to a feral fire as soon as I found him. From the perspective of duration, I'm sure 13 was my longest living elephant by several minutes. More than that though, he was my last elephant. I've never lost a child, but I guess that losing a baker's dozen elephants feels similar. With enough flowers to be a maid of honor, I entered the royal palace, successfully lit the big ass door on fire, failed at getting it open that way, and readied myself for the reinforcements. The plan was as simple as it was foolproof. Bad guys show up, I throw bait on the ground, animals show up, and eat people. Same premise as Madagascar 2. If you're wondering about the other syringes, like that one that makes you go mad, I used it on the battlefield to tremendous effect. I'd love to see a scene in a movie where the protagonist climbs up onto a table just to jump off of it and onto a guy who was within stabbing distance the entire time. The final attack, as you would expect, would have been rapturous had I had my fork and inflatable hammer. The first heavy and a handful of other royal guards fell before me after all 150 pounds of me plummeted into their skeleton from what might have been orbit. In lap 2, I called in Rambi, Winky, and Squeaks just in time to watch me die. I'd had enough. Playtime was over. I threw a stake at someone's head, blew open the gates, and experienced divine intervention from beyond the grave as I made it down to a handful of guys left. The red blood cells were using my veins like a slip and slide. I could have taken them all on at once and lived if my finger hadn't slipped. Spitting in the face of every speed bump I flew over, I landed the killing blow on the last man standing, took down the golden statue of Pagan with a rock, you can't prove that I didn't, and was invited up to the mansion at the top of the mountain to confront the man himself. I disabled the in-game music to be alone with my thoughts on the drive to the cabin. I didn't understand. Something didn't add up. I think the ghosts of elephants past are pulling strings to get back at me. I already own Far Cry 3, 4, and 5, so I can't take advantage of the sale that marked them down to 3, 6, and 9 dollars per game. I can't save you from an elephant if I can't save them from me, but what I can do is suggest that you check out Ubisoft Forward on Saturday, June 12th at 12pm Pacific Time for more information on Far Cry 6. Pagan gave me a choice. Allow a bullet to have its best journal entry ever, or spread the ashes like I came here to. Pagan explained the backstory of my parents. I performed my final task. Pagan flew away, and I did not beat Far Cry 4 with only a machete. Thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land.
follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.